Is the Canon R5C a viable camera for high-end cinematic filmmaking? I think so, and here's why. The R5C is a hybrid camera capable of 45 megapixel photo stills and 8K 60 frames per second raw internally. So right off the bat, it's got the specs to perform. In this video, we show how the R5C is ready to meet the demands of narrative and cinematic productions. So how are we going to do that? Well, we've got this incredible A-frame cabin up in the heart of the White Mountains in New Hampshire. And we're going to tell a story around this cabin and show you the different props and scenes just using everything we have here. So let's get started. First things first, we're set out to build out this camera for different production styles because although the ergonomics of this camera are fantastic, especially for running gun shooting, we want to build it out with a follow focus, some cinema glass, a cage, and a top handle. Some of the highlights of this camera that really make it shine for high-end filmmaking are dual pixel CMOS autofocus with eye detection, a time code port, multifunction hot shoe, and four channel 24-bit audio recording with an audio interface, CF Express Type B with dual slot record and unlimited record time, internal RAW 4K 120, and so much more. All right, this is our opening scene. We found this beautiful river just outside of the cabin. We thought what better way to open this entire video than with a fishing scene and luckily enough, I remember to bring my fishing rod for this scene to use as a prop. So we're gonna have our main character stand on one of these rocks and do some fishing. Will he be successful? Let us know in the comments below. For this scene, I'm using an 85 millimeter T1.3 Cine lens from Canon on the R5C. We're also shooting around blue hour time because it adds even more blue into our scene. And we're going for a more colder look here. Mix that with some of the snow that's still on the rocks around here and you've got yourself a nice moody scene. Action! In addition to our main character fishing, I'm also gonna get some establishing shots, things like the waterfalls around the river and some of the snow as well. All right, so now we've got a walking scene where Matt is gonna be walking back from the river down there. And then I wanna give myself two options for this scene. I'm gonna try one handheld and then I'm gonna try one with a gimbal. My thought is that the handheld one is gonna be a little bit more appropriate for this story, but I do wanna give myself the two options. So let's see what we get. Action. Three, two, one, action. All right, three, two, one, action. So no cabin story is complete without chopping some wood. So that's what our, what our next scene is going to be. We have our character coming back to his cabin and he's ready to ready the fireplace. It's below 10 degrees here in New Hampshire. So even I need to get that fire going in just a few minutes. And so he's coming back. He's going to chop some wood. I'm using the R5C with the T1.5 Cine lens, 35 millimeter. And we're also gonna do some slow motion with that 4K 120 since it's a fast paced action chopping wood. So we could slow that down in post processing. It's also pretty dark here right now. We do have the lights from the cabin, but the low light performance of the R5C really shines in scenarios like this. Three, two, one, action. All right, so we're back inside and we have our character that just came in to light the fire and we've set up some lights and the lights are a little dark right now. We basically just have it as if a whole light, hallway light were to be lighting a bit of the scene before he goes and lights the fire and we'll add a little bit more lights as the scene progresses. So we're gonna do a sliding shot using the gimbal here away from the bricks to reveal the entire scene and him bringing in the wood that he just chopped outside. So let's go ahead and do that.
Now I've got an 85 millimeter prime cine lens at T1.3 and I'm gonna set up on some tripod sticks and then shoot through a plant that we found in the cabin as well for some foreground element for this scene, which is going to be a coffee sequence because what cabin is complete without a coffee and a fire? So I'm really focusing on one shot here and I'm keeping it locked off mainly because if I shoot in 4K or even 8K, I have so much versatility and the ability to crop and make multiple shots out of one, which I plan to do in our final sequence. I've just moved about five feet closer for a somewhat of a macro shot here in 4K 120 because I have the S and Q mode on the R5C going right now. The reason being is I wanted to focus in on the coffee dripping and get a nice close up. It's almost like a macro shot and I've also opened up the aperture to T1.3, which really isolates the coffee dripping because the entire background is out of focus. All in all, this shot definitely helps to tell the story. All right, now I've got this massive softbox adding a backlight to our character, making the scene so much more dramatic because he's a bit sad and you'll find out why later on in this video. And I've also got this Nanlite Papa tube that I'm gonna use here to fill in the bottom part of his face, really enhancing the effect of this fire. Another fun way that you could play with these lights is adding the candle or fire effect to actually make that light fluctuate and make it more of a realistic fire effect. So let's see what that looks like in camera. So I'm experimenting with some atmosphere in a can, which adds both dimension and depth to your scene. Plus it helps a lot with softening the highlights in your frame and also pair that with the R5C and it's amazing highlight roll off and you've got a perfect combo. So let's take a look at the difference between these two. For this last scene, our character hears the doorbell ring and is a little confused, kind of taken off guard because he doesn't know what could possibly be at the door. And of course he gets to the door and it is a B&H package, which he's been moody this entire video. So now this is the one thing that brings a smile to his face, which I'm sure many of you get that feeling too. I know I do. So for this scene, we're back on the 35 millimeter. We're gonna punch in again in a few minutes for a medium close up. And then we'll throw a Pablo tube inside the B&H package as if a warm glow is emitting from the package. All right, let us know in the comments below, best comment wins here. What do you think was in the B&H box when the character opened it? I'm very curious to hear your answers. But this was our final scene, so now let's see what we captured so far on the R5C.
Well, that was a ton of fun shooting with the Canon R5C, such an impressive camera for so many different levels of production. But where should we film with it next? Let us know in the comments or let us know what area of filmmaking we should focus on with the Canon R5C. We'll see you guys next time.